So, I got to tell you, if everyone today that received a citation for violating an act in Coconino County went to court and just tried part of this, <laughs> there's probably how many tickets wrote today? Got to be ten thousand tickets wrote. I, there has to be. If everybody just went and said, "I don't consent." <coughs> to your jurisdiction unless you can show me the law which I violated and the contract that's in place and the notice that you gave me upon that contract. <laughs> if that <laughs> happened 10,000 times, the next time every, the, the judge showed up in court, he'd say, oh man, we, we're going to have to back off here. I mean, we got 10,000 yesterday, we got 10,000 tomorrow, 10,000 the next day. Now we got 30,000 cases that are all going to be put to hearings. We're going to have to back up. Just tell them that we'll take $25 instead of 100 See if they'll pay $25 per cent. We've got to make it less money so that they don't mind paying it. Mm-hmm. Are you following me? Oh, yeah. Okay. So is there any questions tonight before we stop? The, the three-day three day thing you mentioned? To me that everything you're saying to the judge... It's going to get madder and madder, and, and then when he finally finds you guilty, you're going to hang. Okay. That's, a, that's exactly how I felt. And that's a lot of the reason why we fold in fear, because we don't want to make it worse. I can tell you my own experience. I went in and started kind of getting with it with this judge, and he, said, he got out of line with me. Now, he's no better than me, right? Right. Don't we feel that way? He's no better. He puts on his pants just like me. Mm-hmm. In fact, I believe that we're paying his salary. I right. think what we were. So he was asking me questions, and I was trying to I was trying to answer, and he interrupted me. And when he knew where I was going to I was going to answer something, he said, "All right, you're not William Del Faust. We're just going to put out a rest for his warrant." And he takes his paper like this, and he goes, "Put out a warrant for William Del Faust." And I said, "Well, if you're going to arrest him, I brought him here today, and I handed him my birth certificate." And I go, "Here you go. I surrender the defendant to the court. I would like some visitation." <laughs> so the, um, the bailiff walks over and he takes that and he looks at it and he starts to walk over to the judge and they got eye contact and he goes is that a birth certificate is that a birth certificate and he goes yes and he goes give it back to him <laughs> now we're playing ball again okay <laughs> the clerk of the court hands him back the paper and he goes do you have a license to practice law I said I don't need one I'm not practicing law I'm an attorney in fact, not in fiction. <laughs> okay, so he knows that one. Big deal. He goes, do you have a bar card? And I go, that's nothing more than a membership card to a club, and I don't belong to that club either. He looks down and he says, okay, then how are you appearing here today? Now, isn't that cool? He didn't say I was right on any of those things, but they're not an issue anymore at this point in the case. I said, I'm appearing in my unlimited commercial capacity, and I asked the court to do the same. Because they're all limited liability corporations, and they know it. And what I just told him is that I've got a big bond. I'm all bonded up here. I'm ready to go. If I make a problem for you, i got some, I got some bonds in place to cover all my sins. i got some insurance. Okay? So, when the judge sees it, you know what's going on, and you handle yourself accordingly, and not with disrespect, I believe that the judges, a lot of them, look at you and go, all right, this guy has been studying. This is good. I had one judge who was trying to get me out of, this, out of his courtroom. He just could not wait to get to his verdict, and I was arguing with him about getting to the verdict. I didn't want him to go there because I thought he was going to bind it over to a trial. And he dismissed the case immediately and walked out. So I'm, I'm telling you that depending on the judge and whether it's a court of record or not, you have a lot of power if you understand that and you handle yourself that way. Now, I'm not saying to go out and get a speed and take and go try this out. <laughs> okay? In fact, um, we just haven't done that in a while. I haven't, I haven't gotten any tickets. I'm regrouping. <laughs> My wife is really happy because... There's not like, when we used to go to the, the post office box, there'd be a letter in there from the attorney, state attorney, and I go, whoa, the guy's an idiot, man, I can't believe you. And I go home, man, I open up that, man, I'm excited, I got some paperwork. She goes, what, are you sick? Are you kidding, man? I mean, people open up a summons and they go, oh, God. 
play. <laughs> because they don't know what a summons is. A summons is an offer to contract. That's all it is. It's an offer. Okay. So, any other questions? The, the three-day thing, you mentioned the three-day thing. So, okay. what do you do? You go into the and talk to the, the clerk, or how do, how do you... Well, there's there's two there's two sides in the court, okay, and without without violating a trust issue here, there's a private side and there's a public side. The private side is where we need to handle all the issues before it's brought to the public, and we're guaranteed due process of law to exhaust all of our remedies on the private side before it's brought to the public. So if you show up within three days and you say, I'm here to settle the issue, and you're a secured party creditor, you've made all the attempts to come through the door. They won't let you in the door. You've still knocked on the door. Okay? So you've, you've met all the requirements up to that point. Now all you have to do is back up your case with fact. Now remember, actors are acting in fiction. You're the only one there that can act I shouldn't say act you're the only one there that is there in appearing in in the real man form you're the only one that can pick up a pen and cause something to happen the judge can't even give you an order and enforce it on you unless you accept it it's called the slider anyone ever seen the movie or the video that it's called YouTube the, the website but there's one on there called bursting bubbles of government deception yeah. I've watched it a bunch of times. Okay, it's called the slider. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try and contract with Jim here. I want to show you how this works in the court. There's an order here. <clears throat> yeah, just pretend you're a citizen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> order here from the judge, and the the attorney won't ever hand anything to you. Watch. Go to court. He'll go like this. Uh, order from the judge. Now watch this. The attorney's going into the corner of his eye. He goes, "Got him. He took it. Okay, we got a contract." And then he just goes on about, uh, okay, we've got a hearing in a couple of days, or we got to pay the fine and whatever. You sit down, you talk to the uh, bailiff, uh, he's going to give you some more paperwork. And the slider, okay? So here's what you do. Jim, don't act like a slave. Okay, now here's a couple of different ways you can handle this. Uh, here's an order. Let's hand it back to me. Pick it up and hand it back to me. Watch this. Now, watch this contract. I don't accept it. I don't. I got the contract now. He doesn't have it anymore. Who's? It's called the last guy holding the hot potato. <laughs> right now, if you understand your secure party creditors, you can accept this. Just like it is, you can accept it and settle it right then. The best thing to do is settle it with the highway patrolman. Okay, accept it right away. Okay, now, here's what's, this is what Winston Trout says. This is crazy. When they send you something in the mail, okay, first thing I do now is I open it up and I go, oh, they sent me a bill and they didn't send a check to pay for it. <laughs> There's no check. That's crazy. Don't they know they're in dishonor? The law says if you bring an action, you also have to bring the remedy. Did you know that? That's the, that's the law. So there's no check. What, what do I do? I'm going to do my best to turn this into a check and I'm going to return it right away so that they can get paid. Because with this big act that they got going on, there's a lot of costs involved and I want to make sure that they can keep gas in those cars out there. Okay. That's being an honor. All right. Any other questions? I had a question regarding when you go into court, they give you something and you attempt to give it back to them and they won't take it. Then, I mean, how do you how do you I mean, you can't force somebody to take something. Okay. They can't take it. Why? They're a corporation. What are they? Dead. 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 So how do you give it back? And how do you say do you give it back? You, you know. Pick up their hand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The proof of acceptance and brought and brought back into the court. You you can also take it around to the clerk of the court and ask the shipper to deliver the cargo to the proper port. That's a Bill of Lading Act. Yeah. They've got another act in there, of course. We can participate when we need to. Or you can just not accept it right there on the spot. I don't agree to that. You got any other offers? 
<laughs> I don't like that offer. Got anything else? I, I'm going to tell you that the judge is going to notice what you're saying. I don't accept that. I don't accept that. Or you can always conditionally accept it upon proof of something. Gordon Hall's got a great, a great tape on YouTube. If you look up Gordon Hall, he knows just how to say, I conditionally accept all of it. If you can show me where in the law book that I have to accept it. Okay? There's no laws, you see. Since 1933, when they took the gold, all public laws were converted to public policy. Mm -hmm. So you cannot break a policy unless you are part of the policy. Any other questions? So it's like an insurance policy, kind of. That's right. Go ahead. How about uh, photo speeding tickets? Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to give you any advice. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is just how I would handle that. Entertainment purposes only. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For entertainment purposes only. The law, the policy... Okay, we're getting down to policy. Policy says that you have to be notified and you have to sign to appear. If you haven't agreed to that, there's no appearance necessary. I got a bunch of them. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to play. I don't want to play that game. So I don't send them back. I just, it's kind of hard to find me. I mean, I've got a suite. It's about this big. It's, it's got a number on it. <laughs> And I get mail there. Sometimes they send the wrong mail there. They send an, a corporation's mail there, and I'm the real man. So I always send that back. Because if something comes in with a corporate name like Chevron or Walmart, my post office, what do you do with it? You write on there, not at this address. Return to sender, and you send it back without opening it. That's a, that's a polite thing to do, right? So if I get something to a corporate name that sounds a lot like my name, it's spelled in corporation print, I just say thank you very much, but there's no one here by that name. Are you guys following me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, you were talking about going on to the judge's ship. I know that the bar is there, but if you don't cross that bar, what can he do? Well, if he tells you to cross that bar three times and you don't, without responding, you've acquiesced onto a ship. So there's a certain way that you need to, to say that. Now, I can't give you any advice. This is for information for, what is it? Entertainment, Entertainment purposes only. But this is what I said. Is it okay if I cross the bar and sit down at the defendant's chair while retaining all my unleanable rights, while in full effect, past, present, future in the matter? Well, I'd say in it. Yeah. <laughs> the judge says, uh, well, are you in fact Mr. Faust? And my answer is, no, in fact, I'm not. <laughs> I'm <laughs> fiction, I am. But we're not talking about fiction here. You're asking me to lie? Are you kidding? Okay, so that's one way. The other thing is, the judge tells you, sit down. I say, I'm just going to go ahead and sit down. Now, what did I do? I just overruled his telling me to sit down, and I'm telling him what I'm going to do. just happened to be it was the same thing, so that we're both in agreement. <laughs> if he tells you three times to sit down, and you don't, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to spend five days in the tank. <laughs> okay. A lot of my friends are here today, so I'm call me in. That was smart, then. Okay. So, a question? Okay, go ahead. I've been listening to some of the Gordon Hall stuff as well, and one of the things that they've, they've found on in, in their, their material is that you don't make statements in court. For instance, when the judge says, are you an attorney? You don't say, I, I don't have to be an attorney. You say, do I have to be an attorney? That's it. Do I have to be an attorney? Do you see? You turn that around into a question. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's a great way to handle it. Yeah. 